uh, clarify some points on on scripture um, and I just just throw this in here real quick if you don't mind I just being that I was seminary trained too and part of the confusion I had was comparing the actual words of Jesus both from what was in the four gospels plus the beginning of the uh, Acts of the Apostles with those of the writings and words of the Apostle Paul. And I found that when I found a conflict between the two, I would defer to the words of Jesus and um, always find the right answer. So um, I just thought I'd throw that out there if there's any I conflict. wish more people would do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. And that's that's why I concluded that even though as, as you've uh, so wonderfully shown us that um, Matthew's gospel was a, a, a compil- I mean, was an alteration of the gospel to the Hebrews, that there are wholesale sections there that we know are the words of Jesus, like the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And I, what I wanted to address with you about that, just before I go to my other question that Ron and I had spoken about, um, was yeah. the one about in Luke chapter 11, uh, verses 37 to 54, that passage where Jesus is it's actually after one of the renditions of the Lord's Prayer is given at the beginning of chapter 11. And at, 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 at that section, which I've used in court and actually caused judges to become very angry with me, when I've used Luke 11, 37 to 54 and quoted it, um, it's a passage where Jesus is having dinner with the Pharisees and the scribes and the lawyers. And he, uh, they condemn him for, not, for just doing a regular hand washing but not doing the ceremonial washing. And he basically unloads on all of them. Um, the, the scribes and the Pharisees being the clerks and the judges, and the lawyers obviously being today's attorneys. And when he he he, he uh, basically dumps on them, he uses the word woe, at least that's what it is in the King James and most of the modern English translations. But a woe, from my historical research, and I'm not, you know, I, mean, I, I haven't done all complete research, but it comes out as a curse. And um, also, in, when the lawyers uh, say that they're offended, they say when you when you uh, basically curse them, you curse us as well. When you insult them, you insult us as well. And Jesus turns to them and does three things on them. The first one being, woe unto you lawyers, for you place burdens on men grievous to be born, and you don't lift one finger to help. And then the second one is basically alluding to their actual acknowledgement of their participation and their families, their, their father's participation in the death and destruction of all the great true prophets, uh, from the past to ages. And then the final one, though, is the final curse is the one I really believe is the one that really gets me, is where he says, woe unto you lawyers, for you hide the key of knowledge, and you hinder those that are entering, and you do not enter. And then the, the Pharisees and the scribes get together, and they say, um, um, they try to find a way to get Jesus to say something out of his own mouth that they might use to accuse him. Anyways, my, my point is, is, is that, from your study, is that a passage that this Josephus, uh, uh, Ben Matthias, uh, known as St. Luke, actually put in there as a direct quote from Jesus? Because it's one of those passages no, that really resonates. No, it's, it's, a, it's a formal... <clears throat> the word trust is, is, in, is an example. Like you, you find people talking about the word trust being tryst, trudico. There's all these different ones, but... Uh, I believe trust comes from two Latin words, uh, tre or tree, uh-huh. uh, three, and then uh, est being edo. So it's it's uh, it's three conveyances, it's three pledges, it's three. Edo is a very important word in in Latin for um, process. It's a pr- key process word. So the word three has always been a fundamental. Uh, ritual in evoking a high curse. So what, in fact, you're referring to in Luke 11 is a high curse issued allegedly by Jesus against the scribes and the Pharisees, the judges and the clerks. And I would suggest to you that it is not authentic. However, that is exactly how they want judges and clerks to feel and it is classic mafia yeah okay well you just uh... classic mafia in other words condemn them and then they become the condemned and of course the condemned if you were condemned I'll give an example 
The city of Ur is the origin of the black-robed Gali or the Gala, yeah? Yes, it is. Which then moved uh, into an arrangement in Rome uh, as the worshippers of uh, Saturn and they were the they are the typical reapers of the dead yeah yes they are and when you came to the to the uh specific entrances to Ur because Ur became the necropolis of all the dead you would pay them a fee and depending upon whether they liked you is whether they buried the body or basically took your money and disposed of the the body and and it was a disgrace so they were considered uh awful but they were considered condemned. So what they do in this passage is here is a high curse, a condemnation, a cursing of judges and, and, and scribes, which is extraordinary when you think that Leviticus is all about the relationship of the divine uh, and atonement and the purification. So there's a real difference in the Bible's treatment of the modern legal system and the old traditional legal system one might say the venetian uh, uh kazar versus the bar yeah oh very good yes wow you just uh i'm going to have a lot more of these questions for you now that you just answered that one that way so no worries. you just opened okay. up you just opened up a whole avenue for me i i thank you so so what so are you, I remember what you'd written. You'd said that you'd shown that um, there were portions of Matthew's gospel, which was originally the gospel to the Hebrews, that are accurate with added in and twistings to other parts. And then we had yeah. Mark's gospel, which they convinced him to alter it. And then Luke, obviously, wholesale being Josephus ben Matthias and Paul and, and the friend of uh, the first uh, rabbi, uh, Gamaliel. So then we have John's gospel being written often cryptically or with anagrams, and I, I was hoping that if you actually have a chance or if you've got some place you could direct me to help me find a key to decide for the rest of John's Gospel, I'd really appreciate it. And then, obviously, I'm using the books you've got posted there from the Athena, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nag Hammadi and then the works of Jesus that I'm finding very remarkable. So, anyways, I just want to thank you for helping me because uh, those were great points of, of conflict with me, knowing full well that if Jesus' primary teaching was the golden rule, rule there at Matthew uh, 7.12, and how could he be doing these other things? And, of course, he didn't, according to what you're showing now. So Couldn't. I mean, but that's okay. But high, it's certainly um, he, he, a high curse is not going to be issued, um, certainly not um, against anyone, because a, a high curse coming from him and certainly coming from a, uh, a royal... Um, uh, that has the power of issuing high curses is not is is not in line with the teachings or the behaviour. It is atypical. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely, one hundred percent. And that is a really a, right. a, a major clarifying point, which would also then allude to the fact that the epistles of uh, the Saint Paul or Saul of Tarsus, also known as Barabbas, um, would also, if they're in those 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 teachings, which cause great conflict with myself. That created conflict with my ex-wife and my my children and myself over these issues, and this is really a profound uh, settlement for me. So anyway, thank you, Frank, and I I will, I will have more questions for you out of the writings of Jesus after no I answer the diagram. Okay, the last okay. one thing I want to ask you for, if I could, real fast, was on the on the um, I think it was uh, the Pactum de Singularis Calum on the I mean on the Covenants on on one twenty one on binding. You have you made. Yep. The, changes to that recently and, and Ron and I were discussing that trying to sort out how we would apply that with changes with the deed poll and everything else um, the, the the binding uh, the binding section has had some minor changes and will in fact have some further changes because the description there of binding is something that is wholly outside of anyone's direction to inflict upon another. Okay. And I want that to be absolutely categorically, unequivocally clear, that binding is a 
self-imposed process and not one that can be issued by another. Okay? I fully understand that and agree with that based on our just previous conversation. Thank you. All right. Um, so good on you. Last... Talk to you soon. Okay. Yep, sorry. Thank you. That was the last okay. thing I was supposed to ask. Go ahead. I'll take your next call. We can talk about what I had next week then. Thank you. Okay. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Okay. All right. So, Frank, um, the uh, EDP process, you might um, be able to maybe uh, answer an aspect of this question. How does the EDP come into play with custody and visitation with respect to children? That is an excellent question. When they take children away, the real power that they impose is they're using their guardianship powers against you, not necessarily against the children. I know it sounds odd, but let me explain. In the way that the, fam the family court is one of the most terrible systems of torture ever conceived, and it shows that the system is not giving up one iota from trying to maintain control. But what they argue is that you are not competent to administer the best interests of the children. In other words, you being incompetent are effectively a minor. So the society is acting as the guardian, as the parent. So the issue with custody, with any child aspect, has nothing to do with the child, the children in the state. It has everything to do with your standing and your behaviour. And the problem with all these cases is that the officials, everyone is image trained to press your buttons. And I don't know how many times I've heard of cases where people will go for supervised visits and that the children will, will mouth off some uh, automated uh, thing that they've been taught to say to their parents. The parents get upset because the child has basically um, become a robot and says on Ritalin, um, I don't want mummy to hurt me. You know, the, the, the mother or the father goes out to speak to the social worker. The social worker will press their buttons and then you'll find at the next court hearing that that entire episode has been twisted round, that the social worker was threatened, that the child was upset, and that the whole thing is justified. They, it is perverse, it is evil, it is twisted, and that's why they've designed it. So the EDP process has an enormous part to play in establishing that they have no right to claim guardianship over you, no right to claim executor, no right to claim um, a custodianship, and that you are a holder of property. Now, as a holder of property, one of the properties that you hold is your children. I mean, I hate the idea to think that children is property. And I know a parent, a loving parent, isn't viewing the child as property, but that's how they view the child. That's exactly how they view the child. So the, the challenge for anyone dealing with a custody battle is manifestly greater than probably any other issue they're facing. And I, I really mean that. Because they're out to absolutely press every button. They get some perverse, awful, corrupted thrill out of torturing you and torturing the children. And, and really they've picked people into that system who have the the... the behavior and characteristics that really don't even know what they're doing. They think they're helping, but they're actually hurting. And it, it's until you actually take these social workers outside and say, do you realize what you're doing? They don't even realize. The, the, the whole thing is, is corrupted. So yes, the EDP process is crucial for you. And really, there's nothing that you need to do specific to the children. It's everything about being able to redeem your standing and be able to stand there and, with, and withstand the unbelievable, unprovoked emotional blackmail that these courts desperately need to put you in 
to justify their action. 